Welcome back to Dirty 20. Today, we're talking social encounters. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. And uh, today, we're looking at, um, essentially, one of the three pillars of D&D. &D. Uh, in D&D, &D, often people talk about... Um, there being three main aspects of the game, often referred to as pillars. Uh, so the first one is exploration. The idea behind that is uh, that you're exploring a dungeon or, you know, exploring the wilderness, so to speak. Uh, then you have uh, one of my favorites, probably my favorite, combat, um, where you, this is where a lot of the dice rolling comes in, a lot of your stats come in to play in this uh, aspect of the game. And uh, the third pillar is um, role-playing. Now, under that role-playing umbrella, there's a lot of stuff. But um, one of the main things is social encounters. In social encounters, you have a scene, the most common of which is probably the tavern. A lot of people have seen this trope in fantasy and uh, essentially it's where your players arrive at a tavern and in this tavern there are a whole bunch of characters people for them to interact with that they can talk to potentially get information from or be sent on a quest for for dungeon masters building a social encounter can be a little bit difficult um not knowing where to start um, I would say whenever I have to build a social encounter, I uh, think about what my goals are. What do I want this encounter to do? Do I want it to propel the main plot forward? Is it an opportunity for the players to get to know each other's characters? Um, knowing your goal is central when designing a social encounter. Perhaps the most important part of that social encounter is going to be your NPCs. Now, an NPC is a non-player character. It's a character that exists in your world which can give information to your players, interact with them in some way. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to make sure you have a whole bunch of names. Um, this is a really good tip for any dungeon master for any session because social encounters can happen very spontaneously. Uh, you might think, oh, well, this week the players are going to go straight to the dungeon and they're going to want to start killing goblins. But, you know, they might turn around and say, oh, you know what? We need to go shopping. We need to uh, buy some equipment. And there you have the perfect uh, situation for a social encounter. So names, very, very important. Have a whole list of names either in your folder or on your DM screen, and that will make things much, much easier. Also, you have to, um, <laughs> you have to be able to predict to some degree um, whether your players are going to pick a fight with anyone that they come across. Um, if this happens, having uh, stat blocks can be really, really handy. I recommend in the back of the monster manual, um, there's some kind of uh, basic human stats. So, for example, you have veterans, you have city guards, you have noblemen, you have thugs. So... Those are nice, simple stat blocks that if, for example, something kicks off in the tavern that you weren't expecting, you can just simply quickly um, re refer to the monster manual. Uh, like I say, it's in the back pages and uh, pull up one of these stat blocks and you're ready to, uh, to run combat. But uh, yeah, so having stats is uh, handy. Now, um, the next thing is... And this is very important with regards to your goal. What information is there for your players to get? Um, so you might say, well, uh, there have been rumors, right? And a few of these NPCs, if any of the players interact with them, 
buy them a drink, just ask them what's going on. You can throw in some of these rumors that could potentially lay the tracks for things happening later on. Um, if you have a particular quest giver, so say that, uh, you know, uh, they're in this tavern, they're talking to the barman, and the barman says, oh, yes, um, you know, the blacksmith's daughter has been kidnapped, um, and he's looking for someone to go and uh, rescue her, and he's willing to pay. So that can be a way for you to set your players on a quest. Social encounters are really, really fun, and they are arguably um, one of the best things about being a dungeon master, because here you get to play lots of different characters. Um, focusing on one character and building that character up, uh, improving them, learning new skills, leveling them up, that's great. Um, it's uh, very satisfying. But uh, for a dungeon master, you never really kind of have that. Uh, but here is where you get to really enjoy doing silly voices, having mannerisms, certain tics. All of these kinds of things uh, can be a lot of fun and can make sessions really very, very memorable for your players. Uh, one of my absolute favorite um, encounters, social encounters that I ever ran was um, my players were uh, traveling through the countryside trying to get to a detention camp to try and free some prisoners. Uh, and uh, they came across this almost like a, like a farm colony, a plantation of some sort. Uh, which was run by people who had this uh, dreadful deforming disease. And um, they had been granted this land by the authorities, um, who are the bad guys in this situation. So my players arrive and um, they manage to convince the person who is running this kind of commune um, that they are soldiers who are patrolling and um, the the man who runs it uh, turns around and he's very gracious and he's so grateful for all the help that these that the government is giving to these poor people and basically invites them to dinner and we proceed to have a whole session where I present the opposing point of view of the bad guys to all of my players so i show them things that they are doing which are great which are helping people and of course my players the whole time are experiencing this and and feeling kind of guilt that they're they've killed a lot of these uh guards and soldiers and they have these preconceived ideas where, you know, the, the king is the evil man, and they're the freedom fighters. And through this social encounter, all this role-playing, it really gave the players a new perspective on things. So beyond it being just the, okay, here is how we're going to um, lay out some plot hooks, the mechanics of it, there is real potential there to have an impact on the story and the characters within your campaign. Absolutely one of my favorite sessions of all time. So what about you? Have you had uh, some really epic social encounters? Uh, do you struggle when, uh, when building them? How do you, uh, you know, how do you stay on top of all the different NPCs and the information that they have? That's, that's something that I struggle with sometimes. Also, if you have any questions at all, please put them down in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them, either in the comments themselves or we might even make a whole video about them like we've done in the past with our character creation ones. Please check it out. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today to talk about social encounters and how to build them. Uh, we're going to be doing a series uh, where we're going to discuss uh, uh, combat encounters and exploration encounters as well. Hope you'll join us for those. But as always, thank you and keep slaying. <laughs>
for watching if you want to get in touch please head on over to la victoria productions on facebook uh, you can also check us out on uh, instagram i'm enano lvp jazzy j shiro is our producer he's also on twitter at mouth la victoria uh, we're also on uh, linkedin uh, and if you get the time please head on over to our website www.lavictoriaproductions.com um, Sorry. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Shit. Um, and we're still recording. Yeah. So, uh, 